are going to be True Touch and just a second, I think it's uh, True Touch and well, we'll get to that when we get to the game. So uh, everything should be running fine now. Oh yeah, I should probably kind of do that later. Okay, so we're going to be going into game number one. So uh, we're going to be having it's going to be True Touch again as the yellow zerg at the bottom left location on Bloody Ridge and his opponent is going to be Desaque, the orange Protoss at the top right location. Now PDZ, Bloody Ridge, so two player map and also remember that actually relatively easy to kind of split things later on so also something to take into consideration and the first thing that I would want to kind of point out is that I've seen this Aqua play a lot of games and most of the time I wouldn't actually think that he would be in the finals. Not because he's a bad player, just I think there were there were there are a lot of really good players. So I'm actually really happy to see him getting into this finals. And I definitely want to see how he goes against True Dutch, which as we have seen is been a many times finalist in the TLCs. Definitely a very strong opponent. Okay, so we do have a pylon going out at the natural, which is kind of like I guess the standard opening nowadays. And so far, True Touch, we have an Overlord, probably Overpool. Again, another thing that's pretty standard. We have the Red Pool, so an Overpool. Now, we have a Forge going down by the Sakwe before even scouting. So, I guess that in a way, if uh, you are a Protoss and you're okay with going with this kind of style, that you go for the expansion. And most of the Zergs nowadays go for, th for this early pool, like Overpool. It's kind of okay, as well as if there is actually an early hatchery, you might even be tempted to do something like, you know, pylon block here and go for cannon rush. There's a lot of different options when you go for a forge first, especially on a two-player map. In a four-player map, it might be a little bit more tricky, but in a two-player map, it's kind of fine. So, we do see now a drone that's thinking about taking an expansion, and obviously uh, that probe will be able to deny it for a while until at least zugs are out. Uh, we see a pylon block, and the drone scene probably will go to a third, which is where I would normally think that a probe should go. But no, okay, so a pylon gets cancelled, the drone is forced to go to the third, and at the same time, uh, the minerals are not lost because of the pylon being finished. So, mm, kind of okay. Okay, and at the same time, we've got two cannons before. Nexus. We see six Zergings. So because of the forcing of the pylon block and everything else and the hatchery at the third, it seems like the Sakwe that opted for going first for the two cannons and then the Nexus. Now two cannons are pretty cool. Uh, one thing that you can do uh, if you're a Protoss is you put a cannon here and then you put the cannon a little bit back. So the overworld doesn't spot it and the Zergings see one cannon, they try to run through and suddenly they realize there are two cannons and they lose a bunch of Zergings. Now, in this position, that's probably not going to happen, because with two cannons already, that's fine. Of course, there's a problem if you put a cannon back here, another back he down here, that later on you're more susceptible to Hydro Busts, but that's kind of like what the decision of what you want to do. The probe is still alive, uh, no hull damage at all, so it might be able to still get some scouting of information. Uh, there is a third hatch, and we do see gas being taken, so probably lair. Gateway and gas for the Sackway. So this is an core. So this is not going to be the double gateway that uh, Gem likes to do, to be aggressive early on. The probe is going home. It's interesting that the probe didn't try to stay at uh, Trudish's main to get a little bit more information. Huh. I mean, I can understand that that's, that's the decision that the Sackway just makes, but. Uh, usually, you want to at least try to be there around, at least you start taking a little bit of hull damage and you can always pull the probe. Anyway, um, after the first gas, will we see a second early gas? This is another interesting tell by the Protoss. A second early gas usually tells you something like, for example, a Corset Reaver build, maybe, because it needs a lot of gas, right? But um, We'll see, we'll see. Uh, so far, just more economy for the Sakwa, and we got a Stargate. Stargate is about 20% done when the lair is about 60% done, so as far as I understand that's pretty standard in terms of timing, like both players are relatively even. Uh, 
Okay, so we do see just was ugly falling down here. Some overlords scouting, but they're pulling back because of the Corsairs. And so far, we don't have anything extra. Okay, that there's the lair and an instant spire. What you touch? Uh, I don't know if you're talking to me, Assault, about the time, maybe? I don't know. Okay, so we do see two Zolls moving out, and these two Zolls are basically to kind of to force a little bit more Zoglings. Uh, if two more Zoglings can be forced, that will be actually pretty useful. Okay, so... Spire timing will get scouted by this drone, which is pretty cool. We have some Zolls blocking here, doing a decent job against... Uh, a few more zerglings. As you can see, as you guys can see, there's a little bit more zerglings being forced. Oh yeah, another two here. Although speed is finished, which can be. I mean, you, you need a lot of zerglings to break, th break through two cannons, and like there's a lot of blocking, so it's definitely not going to be something that you can do very cheaply. Now, uh, at the same time, we have Citadel, so the second playing is so far extremely standard. Uh, the Corsair is moving out. So far, no kills on it. Because you can see the overlords hit in very interesting positions. And as far as not yet finished, it's close, but it's not finished. So that Corsair for a while can still be uh, looking around. I'm from uh, actually Poland, but I lived in Spain most of my life. Um, and we see, okay, so the fourth, fifth hatch. So, so far pretty pretty well, things are pretty going pretty well for both players, like there's no damage being taken by anybody, both players have, have been able to do whatever they wanted. We see a cannon already going down in the main, and the positioning of this cannon is actually quite interesting because I don't think it defends really well against any kind of things like, for example, Mutas, but it can definitely give you some possibility to defend like a tech building, like a High Templar building, right? So, the cannon defends against possible Scourges, while the Corsairs can kind of fight against some mutas. We'll see if that comes into it, but so far just two scourges. And some sunkens coming out? That's interesting. I mean there's only three zealots and a plus one and one gateway. So oh sorry, two gateways. But that's still not that much. So it's interesting that uh Twitch opts for the Static defense, except uh, instead of going for a more mobile, like for example, a few zergons. Maybe just save some uh, to make sure that larva is still constantly being produced. Now, on the flips, wh where are those drones going for to touch? And why? Oh, <laughs> they're blocked by the zerglings, and unfortunately, to touch doesn't seem to realize this. Okay, so zealots are coming down already with uh, with some zealots, and at the same time, you. They have plus one, but we do see that you know two sunkins and five zerglings against just four zealots. That's kind of that's 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 easy to defend. Unless some some uh, drones make it snipe, but yeah, it seems like the second is not going to work. Great. Oh, two drones that were rallied like there suddenly become like problematic. Yes, I'd lo I'd love to have the skill of scan. Unfortunately, no. Uh, okay, so anything else? We have armor actually going up for mutas, which uh, sorry for air, which is interesting because I think that. Oh my god, because look at this amount of Corsairs. So the Sakura has been building Corsairs constantly. He's at 6, he has plus 1, and he's getting a 7th, which is kind of the magic number. Uh, you could go with 6, I still think 7 is the magic number, but... Maybe what the Sakura wants to do is he wants to make a really good fleet of Corsairs, and then kind of start sniping Overlords. But it seems like Trudach already kind of predicted this by going armor and at the same time going air. And I guess the reason why that's so is because he saw that the army that was actually trying to push was so small. Now a third is going to try to be taken, but bear in mind that if the Corsairs aren't able to contest the Mutas and the Scourges in the air, at the same time look at this guys, we have Lurkers coming down. And if it, that, if it comes to it that, um, that the Mutas are able with the Scourges to destroy this Corsair fleet, which is possible, whoa, first hit, then Suddenly, that third is no longer being possible to be taken. Okay, so mutas are coming to fly in, but yeah, Corsairs actually react in time. Now, some damage will be taken on the way out, but it seems like not even one Corsair is gonna fall. So that's actually really, really good to be able to stop them. What kind of placing have a... Uh, hmm. 
I'm trying to think about those. I don't know what is the case. Uh, so we do have a pretty decent army going down now from the Sackway. Mm, with three gates, four, five gates, and no. Okay, so five gates is mm, it's not a very standard style. Usually, I think you go for four, then take a third with ops. But uh, so far, there's no third, so this seems like to be a little bit more uh, efficient at uh, using your economy. Now, courses are no longer being made, and we have how many? I don't see that now. Uh, nine corsairs. So now nine should definitely destroy the air army of Trudech, even with a plus one. I think we'll see that when the engagement actually happens. If you get a really good wrap around with the scourges, you can still beat them. But yeah, there's actually a pretty big investment by Trudech into those mutas. And if they die because of the Scourges, then suddenly his army becomes a lot smaller. Now, he's still lucky enough to have some Lurkers, but the OBS is already coming out. So, yeah, I think that this is actually looking pretty well for the Sakwa so far. He does need to take a third like yesterday, okay? So, without the third, it's still going to be kind of even, even if he does kill this base, which he looks like he's gonna do. And it seems like Trudech is bringing a pretty heavy counter into the natural with Zogun, Muta, and Lurker. Now, Mutas are kind of getting distracted going to the wrong way, which actually gives a lot of good situation because Mutas are not actually doing that much. They're still going to get killed, and at the same time, this is actually probably not going to do anything. Okay. Yeah. So this attack actually by Trudech pretty much does nothing. Although, yeah, you don't want to lose in those units, but the problem is that the Mutas, if they went with attacking here, they snipe the cannons, then the Lucas Boro, and then you have Servings, suddenly you have a lot of problems, but because the Mutas got, like, kind of stopping here, uh, uh, I see to dead, I'm just losing popularity, but not bad. Okay, so, uh, what now? I mean, Tudis is still taking this fourth, but... Yeah, Salt, I'm not, I don't want to really talk about my opinions on StarCraft 2, it doesn't look too good, even with a new expansion out, but maybe maybe that's just because of now, people maybe didn't get it yet, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, okay, so the third is going to come down for the Sakwe, and Trudech is actually double expanding? Yeah. I guess it kind of makes sense, because uh, at this point Trudech does need to get some good positioning, so, oh, High Templar snipes, some probes seems to be also getting sniped here. It's not that big of a deal yet, 55 probes still are out for the Sakura. So, we'll see exactly how well this uh, looks. Uh, I mean, Accelerator, if I, I played it like yesterday, the Star StarCraft 2, the, not the... Uh, I didn't play the last expansion, I didn't even get it, but I think it was like 50,000 players playing StarCraft 2 yesterday and the game pretty much just came out so with 50,000 people when your game comes out when you had like 8 million people playing it when StarCraft 2 came out it's a pretty big dip deep. okay so it seems like this base might go down but remember that the, this base is still up so Twitch is actually trading one base and trying to go here and destroy this one so it's actually a possibility that you will be able to do that ah will this work? Yeah, there's a lot of cannons, and yes, yeah, some units are getting distracted going to the natural. Ah, this is gonna be defended again. Again, it seems like okay. Oh no, no. If the probes, if the probes don't die, it's still not that bad. Okay, but a lot of probes going down now. Uh, so, I mean, this is oh, but actually, the second is actually going to kill this fourth, and with this fourth going down, this actually will look like. The Sakwa is actually going to be really ahead if you can get this Nexus save. I mean, these Lurkers, th there's two of them attacking a the pylon. If all of them focused on the Nexus, they would uh, definitely take it. But we'll see about that. Now, there's still three base versus two base. So this hasn't changed. But bear in mind, guys, that the Sakwa is actually mining out already. Like, he's about to mine out. If he doesn't get this Nexus saved, he's actually going to be right in a second. Well, as if we look at Trudach, he still actually has a lot of minerals in his bases, so 
Crush could still mine for a decent amount of time where uh, the Sakura would actually be dried up. So this Nexus is really key for him. Unfortunately, the Nexus was tried to be killed twice and twice it failed. So with that, and once the Sakura can kill this base again, which definitely he should be able to. Oh. Um, Nyan Artist, I don't think it's uh, about intelligence, I think it's about commitment. Uh, playing a game like StarCraft requires a lot of hours, uh, same as Brood War, and you need to commit a lot of time to it, and a lot of people just like to play different games, so I wouldn't say it's just about that. I would just say that people just don't want to commit to one game. But that's just my opinion, okay, so it kind of really doesn't make any sense that I've been talking about this. <laughs> okay, so we have a lot of Zodians coming down, and they're gonna probably block this kind of this, this Dragoon army, uh, and Zolt's kind of stopped, but the, but the base does go down, so it's still still going to be 3 base versus 4 some, soon? I mean, this game has been like, how many times? This is 15 minutes, but both of the players have been killing like expansions left and right. Actually, yeah, no, this expansion never going down, just some probes mining going down. So, definitely, uh, the, it seems that both players are actually doing pretty well. Now, it seems that the Sakura is kind of already safe at his third and he wants to get his fourth. And I don't see how Trudich can actually deny that. But at the same time, Trudich does seem to be taking, like, again, another expansion. So, we might get into a split map, map situation, even though this game started pretty, like, pretty hectic. A lot of aggression at the beginning. So... We'll see, we'll see though, because this observer actually sees this, so I wonder if the Sakura will try to force this location to be contested constantly, which I think he should. And this way he takes this base easily. So these are storms, but this is just some sort of, it's not like a really big deal. Also, uh, the, the macro for the Sakura seems to be really on point, but his army seems to be extremely small. I don't know if it's because he's constantly like losing small amounts of units or because he's just like maybe keeping some of his army back here. It doesn't seem like that. I mean there's some units there like one high temple or something more but his army actually looks quite small for the amount of uh, supply that he has. Maybe he just has a lot of probes? No, 50 probes so... I mean it's about a hundred supply. Oh my god. Oh, the DT. So there wasn't an, an, actually an Overlord here, but if he went for the DT, if for the uh, the Fighter, he could have actually gotten it. But at this point, when there's a the Fighter at the at the six o'clock, this base is actually going to be very difficult to breach. So Sakura will have to probably try to be happy with taking the twelve o'clock, and at the same time probably going for Reavers because this map is small enough that you have very little economy. Oh, so DT is actually doing some damage in here. And an, an Overlord is actually coming back, but it will die on the way up, so will we see... No, there's no detection whatsoever at this base, so 2DTs are going to completely destroy this. It seems like actually 2DTs is going to go for the counterattack, but with two Zealots, a Dragoon and a DT, and a complete block here, this is not going to work. I think so. It shouldn't work, right? Uh, the DT is unfortunately getting splashed. And, okay, we do see a swarm now, so that's a, that changes a little bit things. Now, the DC really has to keep doing damage. I mean, it's getting splashed by the workers, which is bad, but at the same time, this base is going down, so it seems like it's going to be four bases versus three very soon, unless this can be cleaned up. And uh, do we have another swarm? No. With no other swarm, but these are clackings already, so they're going to take this next really, really fast. Uh, oof. Unfortunately... I mean, the, this base is still easy to claim by the Sakura, right? So, that's actually a huge difference that happened, to, that is actually going to be true right now. And also, Trudix is losing a lot of overlords. He's supply blocked for a while now, which is going to be really difficult for him. Now, what else? Um, I mean, yeah, look, Sakura can take this base. Sorry about that. 
The Zero can definitely take this base, and it's very easy for him to defend it. He keeps his units here, he makes some cannons, he leaves a high temple or two, and then he moves out. Now, on the other side, for Tutus to defend this base is actually going to be quite difficult, and he doesn't even have the economy or the supply to do that. Like, there is no... he's supply blocked, he doesn't have a good economy, he doesn't even have a good income right now, because although his bases dried up a lot later than the Sacquis, he doesn't have that many of them either, so... This is actually working pretty... Pretty, pretty good for the Sacque. Now upgrades though are really good right now for Tudash. He has 3-2, whereas 3-0 is only for uh, the Sacque. So the Zergings are actually going to be doing really well, although Storms, wow. With that kind of Storming, I don't think that will matter that much. But yeah, the Supply did like drop 20 Supply to the Sacque right there, so... Oh, and another play, maybe? Yeah, another play. I mean, the plays are good, but you still will need some more units to actually do something with it. Oh, one storm on the lurkers. No second storm, though, it seems. Yeah, no second storm. Yeah, and the Zerglings are now actually making a number of these play goods. So, that's gonna fall. We do see three High Templars and three Archons, but they're running out. They should probably try to save these High Templars, but okay. And so, even though, as I said, the Sacque still has a supply lead and he still can't keep this base up. Whereas Trudach will have actually some difficulty in keeping this one. And at the same time, the 12 o'clock though is still not claimed by anybody. So, both of these players are still capable of taking the game. I think Trudach is slightly in a better position. Because even though his economy is actually not good right now, uh, he has. 3-2 uh, Zerglings, and as a Protoss, when you take this base, you have to also remember that there's a possibility of a drop here, you know, with a few Cracklings that will pr pretty much destroy your base. Now, we do see that a Reaver Tech is up, so there is definitely some possibilities here, yeah, <laughs> David Kim will balance Brood War, now that would be a funny thing to happen, yeah, he will just add, like, OP units here or there. <laughs> Okay, and I don't know. I mean, I think I think Trotus will can take this game because even though there is a pretty decent composition right now for the Sacque, this army is actually pretty small. And in small armies, when you have crack cracklings, it can be a lot cheaper for the Zerg to get good engagements. You need like gas units and things like these, where you know just twenty Zerglings that don't cost that much can suddenly start sniping things. So we'll see about that. Now we do have three High Templars actually here, so. Three Art Templars are definitely going to be able to storm this. And the Defiler is actually really late for the party, so... Yeah. I mean, with the Defiler, if the Defiler swarmed two areas, you could kind of split the Zerglings and maybe get a better engagement. But with you, if you send the Zerglings first, then definitely it's a lot easier for the Protoss to just storm overall and get a few extra kills with the cannons. Now, it's still not that bad for Trudage, I think, because 111 supply against 150, it's still doable, especially if you don't have Reavers. Now, there's actually a pretty good Archon count, so Lurker Ling now probably would be the better way to go about this. Now, we see some Lurkers going out of the 6 o'clock. My question is, where do they go? Okay, so it seems that it's going to be an attack on the bottom base again, but for Trudach, and I mean, with some lurkers and at the same time swarm, I think it's possible to break this, especially with one high Templar. But the units are kind of getting distracted, and that's not going to allow a reaver to come down here, which that's actually going to give like a decent boost for this defense. So. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that this will probably give the defensive needs for Turinac, uh, sorry, for uh, the Sacred to kind of keep this. But we will see if that's actually going to be the case. So, some DTs, there is, there is an Overlord, so it gets to see that. And yeah, the Reaver actually is doing a, a really good damage. Uh, so, this will. I mean, this will still kill a good amount of cannons, and bear in mind, guys, that at this point, um, 
It's actually the minerals which is the bigger problem for the Protoss because High Templars, you know, you can make High Templars because even when gas is at the place, you still get some gas. So the gas is not that big of a threat for Protoss this late in the game. If things have been going normally, of course. But the minerals are actually pretty big, so spending like another 5 cannons can be difficult. Now we do see an attack coming from this army with no storm. Yeah, one storm, two storm. Okay, so two high temples coming down. But you know, with a few swarms, uh, those, oh, with a few swarms and like a lot of zombies coming out, this is actually very difficult to get through. So definitely will be a problem. Okay, so we need to see another attack. I mean, look at this. The reaver is actually being, gonna pay for itself in gold because of how much this is doing now. Oh, this actually, this is actually undetected. So, <laughs> this lurker can still actually kill this nexus, right? Yeah. I mean, there's actually a chance that uh, it takes so long for an observer to get here that this is actually going to kill it. No, no, the observer is coming up. Oh. And the reaver is in range? No, it's not in range. So, the reaver has to be moved or the nexus is going to fall. That nexus can fall. Like, just a few more snipes, guys. And we see the army down here. Like, oh, it's moving. Oh, 26 life. Whew. Uh. Mm, okay, just a second. I, I think the stream is working correctly. I'm just gonna check. Okay, so I think it's just for you. You'll only just, if you can refresh, maybe go into Twitch. If in your Tim Liquid is not working, it might be a Tim Liquid problem. Sometimes that happens. Um, now, this Nexus, if it survives a long time from this point on, I would be surprised. I mean, it did take so much damage that. <laughs> and an Arbiter coming down for. The Sacra, so the Sacra has been changing this uh, this uh, kind of game style, game idea. Now the problem with an Arbit Arbiter and the reason why you don't do Arbiters is because of Scourges. Uh, it's very easy to counter with a few Scourges and kill it, so that's why you don't usually get it. And we see some Guardians go into the 12 o'clock. Now once the Guardians actually... Oh my god. Oh, for a second there I thought he was going to lose every single Guardian. To them, to then to those two cannons, because it attacked the Nexus. That would have been huge. What the hell? Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at this. The Sakura actually blocked his own units through the ram, and is now forced to evacuate as his 12 base is going to go down. It would have probably not have gone down if he didn't block this. Ooh. I mean, the Sakura still has like a pretty good lead in supply, right? So it's not like he's dead, but he's down to one base, which could be easy sniped by like a few cracklings running in. Which I guess Trudis doesn't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure he would have sent units down there. And although Trudis is actually down in supply by a twenty by forty supply, uh, he does have one two mining bases, so as long as he can ignite this one, and maybe even snipe this one, then the Sakura might be in big trouble, but it's definitely kind of, uh, it's, for both players this is a difficult situation. Uh, for the, both players know that in this situation they're actually uh, not doing the best, and it's actually difficult to think if they should be going for one thing or another. Now, whoop, the Orbiter does fall to the Scourges, and we have so good Lord trying to kill this army in a high ground? That's not a good idea. That's, that's not a good idea. You don't want to go up a ramp. Yeah, that's why not. You, you don't want to do that. You, you really don't want to do that to touch. That's not a good idea. Now, the Nexus is going to be built again, and some extra Guardians are coming up. Now the, yeah, you want to just snipe the units with the Guardians while you know you kind of later send the units. You don't want to be sending them right away. And one Archon is going to fall. Oh, yes. So there's only three Archons left, and. One, two High Templars with, yeah, actually some storms are out there and there's some courses coming out, so uh, this game is kind of getting a little bit crazy, like both players are trying to fight for expansions, but this one has been going out for way too long, I don't know why it's not being attacked, now some more Zerglings and some more Rupers coming out, uh, yeah, kind of difficult to get a good position here, although that's, that's pretty good shot, that's going to actually deal a lot of damage, you see already one of the Argent's balls, and a lot of the Zolas will take a lot of damage, and there's not enough minerals actually for uh, the Sakura to like make a, 
a bunch of cannons here, so he's basically relying on making, you know, high templars and getting two archons. So Twitch might be actually able to break this if he can get a pretty strong composition to get the attack on now. We see some extra look, uh, guardians being morphed, and at the same time, uh, Zergans and oh, actually, he's getting some extra kills. This is like very scrappy right now because if you see Twitch is like 80 supply against 124. So it would look like the game is actually hugely in favor of the products, but the reality is that this base is still under con it's still contested. So if that base goes down and the Zerg can secure it, then by, by having so little minerals left at this fourth, then this probably will be game. Now, will it be so? I think so, yes. I think the upgrades are going to be too much. Look at this. There's just one Archon left, some cannons, and these Zergans now have free reign over this base. The pr minus Minus can definitely take the space now, and there isn't that much to be done. Now we see a Reaver, and a High Templar, and an Arbiter for the Sacquist. So the Sacquist is really thinking about a way to kind of maybe efficiently get back the space, but I think at this point it's a little bit too late. But we'll see though, I mean, you can make some magic with these units. And a plague on the Arbiter. Then some Scourges, probably. Yeah, they're the Scourges. Uh, they're gonna get the Arbiter. Yes, so the Arbiter's gone. And with that, I mean. Well, Trudas is still not taking this base, though. I mean, he definitely wanna go, wants to go for this base ASAP. He doesn't wanna waste any time because there's still one base versus one. Actually, no base versus no base, pretty much. And actually, this this is really going to be an attrition war. Both players have pretty much no more economy left for themselves, and this is the last base to be taken. So, both players want the space, but neither of them can actually efficiently, like, completely take it. So definitely. Whoever is able to get any kind of lead at this point on is going to win the game. So we do have some guardians coming up. Really important to kind of get some attacks. Now we do see another play. Guardians and observer snipe. Oh, another observer there. It's it's played, so it should be visible. Oh! And a storm kills his own observer. Now we see some extra zombies coming up from all the sides actually. But yeah, the Archons are a little bit too powerful for that. I mean, you can't just send small uh, certain groups against them. Now, one Archon will probably fall. Uh, yeah, so one Archon does fall. But there's still a good amount of lookers left. Uh, oh my god, they were actually the Filers. But the Zerglings didn't attack under Swarm. And now True Dutch is losing his 12 o'clock. And it seems like the cycle will be actually able to claim it. I mean, it, he doesn't actually have like even enough minerals to get a nexus right now. So, if he does make the nexus, that's going to be probably the last nexus that he can make on location. And Trudish still has three guardians and some zergans. Although this is a bad idea, you should really wait for uh, a defiler until before you send these zergans in. Like. Archons are going to be far more efficient if this, uh, if uh, there is like a defiler in here. Well, we do see that uh, Jordan is still trying to get something done out of this, but I mean he still has some minerals here, so uh, the, the thing is, how do you transfer probes to this location, right? A reaver will go down, we have some devourers even. So that's definitely gonna be a problem. And a high temple snipe. Oh that guardian is gonna die. Okay. Four Four Archons. Four zealots. One reaver. Against this kind of guardian force, which is actually going to die. Surprising. 
And at the same time, uh, we do have Devours, Zergings. I, I still don't understand why there is no, like, uh, Defiler in here. It would be really a good idea to get Defiler. Uh, this is also gonna fall. And Zergings should not stay there. That's. I mean, why is. Why are the units for Truda just kind of. Kind of like completely going around. I mean, this is really a scrappy game. You really want to save as many units as you can. Okay, so the Zerglings plus the Guardians, I think, should be enough. Oh, look at that. All these Zerglings, they're gonna go for the Nexus. They're gonna get it, I think. I think they might get it. No. Ah! God damn it, that's so close. Like. Uh, but it seems like the sack will, will get the 12 o'clock, and with that, I think he's gonna be able to kind of stop this. I don't say, I, I just don't see how Trudas now can kind of break through this. Although those pros might get kind of killed. Yeah, I mean, still no problem. Like most of the pros have already been transferred, so it's not like they're actually needed there. Whew. Okay, so yeah, this game is actually getting quite long. I'm gonna get it by two guys. I think there's not that much more to be looking at. It's just random small groups of units getting stormed and attacked. And all the action is still going to be around this base. Like, there's no way that either of the players are going to be thinking about doing anything else until this base is actually mined out. And from what I see, Trudek is trying to be aggressive with his units, but he's failing at it. He's trying to micro, but it's not working. Okay, now we do see that some damage has been done, but we still two Arkans. And we probably drill even. Wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, the Reaver is sticking to damage, but it's not killed yet, so. Now the Corsairs are also a problem. Ah! Uh, damn it. Oh! Snipe on the Nexus. Yeah, that's actually gonna work. Although, uh, at what cost? I mean. Sure, the Nexus is sniped, and these probes are actually going to be long distance mining, which means that some units in Q can do something. But at the same time, Twilight still needs units to actually get the base for himself. And it seems like there's enough extra minerals to get now the Nexus down, so... Twilight still has to get out there, like, Twilight still has to get this. Well, Twilight isn't taking middle, because right now the real fight is over this position. If the Sackwood gets this base, it is still lost for him. Like, Trudis doesn't have money either. He wants to starve for the moment. And at this point, that's the only thing that he can do. Uh, to be fair, it's not a bad idea. I just don't think that it can work if you already have a bad economy source yourself that's so low. So, okay, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I think at the time this base is ended and this army can't attack, which. I guess should be the case. I mean, we see Trudez already long distance mining, so. I mean, you can always do that. I do hope that the rest of the game, the, the other games, are not going to be this long, because otherwise it's going to be actually. I mean, I, I wasn't like that tired before, but. Uh, guys, this is going to. This is taking some long time. Okay, so. Again, some more Guardians, uh, I mean, with such a low unit count, if you micro all of your units correctly, then these Guardians can do some work. Oh, and we have a DT now, getting some kills in the net and the middle. Uh, okay. <laughs> So, what else? Okay, so some cannons going down. I mean, I know really guys, I'm gonna speed it up because this is really starting to get a little bit boring. Although, this DT is on whole position and it just killed 10 drones. So, yeah. And that's actually gonna break it. That's actually gonna kill his Nexus and That actually. Wow. 
I didn't expect that to work. I really didn't expect this. And with that, 46 population with what? Two dragoons, two eye templar. What, what, what's the count? One zilla, two dragoon, one Dark templar, two eye templar, two corsairs. Yeah, okay. None of these units can actually even kill two uh, like ten zergons unless you get really good storms. So, but wait a second. Turret is actually mined out himself. If this game takes like another twenty minutes. I'm gonna. I, I'm just quitting. I, I, no. 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 I just no. Like really. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is going to be long distance mining versus long distance mining. Don't tell me this is a draw. If this is a draw. Oh god. If this is a draw, I'm. I'm. I'm like by four every single replay or something <laughs> because look at this like 29 supply against 52 supply and it's actually the sack where the one who's ahead oh my god yeah yeah okay yeah i'm gonna go by two that's just that's just nuts how many probes do we even have we have 23 probes so it's not like there are no probes it's just that the probes cannot be defended Oh, fudge. Now, okay, I think Twitch takes this, takes this because... Or not. Oh, God, I don't know. Um... Yeah, so long distance mining versus long distance mining. I mean, usually I'd be really excited about this. Like, you know, in, if I if this was like 5 p.m., I'd be like, oh wow, this is so cool. You very rarely see this. But guys, I think it's like 1.5 a.m. No, something. Okay, so it's not even 1 a.m. But oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> long distance. Long distance mining against long distance mining. Oh. Okay, I, I think draw. Uh, sorry, draw. The Sakwa, I think the Sakwa takes this. Because he can actually deny the drones from mining. And uh, actually, Turach cannot de deny. Oh, okay, so one. <laughs> okay, he can't, he can't actually deny this. Like, this will get some kills, but it will probably not deny the mining. So. Atronach is still like trying, he's he's actually microing his units very well to get some kills here and there. But I think eventually that will stop. <laughs> what the hell? He just killed another Arkham. Oh, oh come on, oh god, guys, what is this? Like, you know... I I was like, okay, no, no problem, I'll just cast the finals, you know, I can solo cast this, that's no problem, I, I can manage this, and then, like, just to prove me wrong, these guys are going to be playing an hour game where there's nothing happening. <laughs> Somebody please make it stop. Somebody please, GG. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, a minute of a break. I need to, I don't know, like, put my head in an ice bucket challenge or something like that. Just a second, guys. Be right back.